Hey, if you are exploring different watercolor brushes or want to know the different kinds of shapes that you can get with them, then this is the video for you. I make weekly art tutorials, paint alongs and vlogs. And in this video, I am going to be unboxing and sharing these brand new Rosemary & Co brushes that were very kindly gifted to me by a fellow YouTuber called Paint In Hiding, who I will link down below in the description. She was kind enough to ask me to pick a few of my favorite brushes. And I thought that this would be a great opportunity to experiment with different shapes. As of this point my go-to's are round brushes which is pretty much the standard shapes that most people start off with and I absolutely love using my Princeton Aqua Elite round brushes for the majority of my watercolour painting. This is future me so I can confirm that thanks to Paint in Hiding sending me this wonderful gift one of the brushes in this set actually becomes my new favourite go-to especially when it comes to my watercolour florals and I share all that and why in this video that I'll link for you down below. I'll be sure to link all the brushes and everything in the description too let's see can you see this <laughs> so it comes with what looks like oh yes their catalog of all their different brushes oh okay i'm curious are these what are these they look like sweets oh yeah they are sweets it's chocolate <laughs> and it also comes with stickers the main event the brushes we first have this shape and this is the cat's tongue and I've seen it used so often. The shape itself kind of reminds me of a leaf. So I thought that this would be a great addition for my botanicals and may just make my life a little bit easier when it comes to just creating those lovely leaves. And I wanted to get a slightly bigger size than I normally use. So this is a size 10. Then this is the sword brush. It almost reminds me of a dagger brush, but it's just longer. So again, I'm really curious to see what kind of shapes I can get and if it will come to a really nice fine tip. Just for extra tiny details. And I didn't realize how tiny it would be, like super, super small. This, I've heard such great things about the dagger brush. So this is a 3 8 inch dagger brush. And then, we have this one. Now this is an oval wash brush. Kind of reminds me of Filbert and it's just like a go-to size for me when it comes to using it for gouache. So I wanted to see if I could use it for watercolors as well. And again, I'm trying to get like a different range of sizes as well as shapes. And then last but not least, <laughs> a travel brush. And I decided to get a cat's tongue brush in the travel brush and I'm so excited about this because I find that it's quite hard to find travel brushes that have different shapes so these are the ones that are my go-to thus far I almost always use a round this one's a filbert this is a round and now I have a cat's tongue to complement that as well but I just love the fact that the bristles can be protected and it just makes painting outdoors on the go so much easier I'm going to be using my Roman Schmoll watercolors and I'm just going to also be using like just some cellulose paper to mess around to really experiment and see what kind of shapes we can get when you initially get them so it's good to just like add plenty of water until it becomes soft and then you can use it to paint so this is the cat's tongue i just want to see what kind of super thin lines that we can get which is great and then light pressure heavy pressure light pressure heavy pressure oh Look at that. And I want to see what other shapes we can get. And then light, heavy again. Side. Dry brush. I'm impressed. If you're enjoying this video, then don't forget to hit the like button and to consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you. And we'll do light strokes, heavy strokes, juicy, and then light, heavy, light, heavy, straight line, light. I think the key thing for me when I'm trying to familiarize myself with a new brush is to try and just mess around with it as much as possible. So trying different pressures, trying different directions, trying different angles, holding the brush differently, seeing what kind of shapes come naturally or more easily when I'm using the brushes versus ones that perhaps don't come as naturally, trying different 
pressures in one stroke um, trying thin lines thick lines trying to cover large spaces so on and so forth so I can really see the difference and try and figure out how I could apply that to my paintings and then oh which one <laughs> uh, let's use this like tiny 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 brush fine detail light I'm trying to do it as light as possible you know what I must say I'm impressed by how much water it held you know how it could just keep going and going and going light and heavy light and heavy I wouldn't really use it to cover large spaces so that's fine and then we have kind of curious which one should we use let's use the dagger brush first really load it up let's do light strokes first even lighter if we can try and get a fine point I've pretty much stained the ends and it's okay paintbrush isn't meant to be used and then this to me looks like is it a sword yeah sword straight lines so you can get a really nice thin line with this and then oh this one is <laughs> hard to navigate Trying to oh look at that! I just literally wow! I just literally went down. Oh, literally just going down gets us that beaut. What kind of magic is that? Then light, heavy. That is pretty cool. And it is the one quarter. And now we have the three quarter ounce oval wash, which is a series 312. Fine line. So understandably harder. But this works great for covering large areas and also for just being looser. I don't really know if I'll apply it when doing my florals, but I think it's more so when I'm doing landscape paintings. I think similarly to doing swatches, exercises like this can give you great insights into your materials, into how they work. But even more than that, I think ultimately you have to create paintings to really understand how your materials, whether they be brushes or your paints, actually work, the things that you enjoy using and how they work in combination with other things. And that is exactly what I did in the video that is to follow that I will link for you, where I essentially try to paint a similar thing using three different brushes brushes the cat's tongue the dagger brush and the sword brush and it just gave me such great insight and it's been a few months of me experimenting with all these different brushes and really and truly the dagger brush has won its way into my heart I absolutely love painting florals with it I find it to be such a versatile brush and I really 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 enjoy it um, a special thank you to paint in hiding for this wonderful and generous gift I really really appreciate it if you haven't checked out her channel already be sure to do so I will link it down below she creates some really excellent content as well if you're still watching then you are most definitely a real mvp and i really 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 appreciate you let me know that you're still watching by telling me your favorite brush shape and if you enjoy this video you'll definitely be sure to enjoy the following ones where we delve even deeper on painting with different materials thank you so much and i'll see you next week bye three three eighths inch so this is a three eighths inch that i've got